So it's the eyes of March and all my potatoes have eyes. So it's time to put them into the garden. So that's what we're gonna do today. We've been doing the Ruth Stout method for the last two years. And you can see my garden bed there in the background. And this year we have added in some composted manure. I do wanna explain a, a couple of things Typically the Ruth Stout method is, you can start with a no-dig garden. You can actually just have, which we did here two years ago, just some lawn and then put some cardboard boxes down and then throw some compost soil on top and then your, your straw or hay and you're gonna plant your potatoes right in, into that. You don't have to dig, it's no-dig gardening. This makes mama's life real great. In that first year, unfortunately, I was planting very late in the season and so I was pulling all my own compost out and my compost wasn't fully composted hmm. so it had lots of bindweed in it plus there's a lot of bindweed in my lawn and that is just an ongoing battle that I face here on my urban homestead so the bindweed just kept coming up uh, last year I had put coffee sacks. I was thinking that I would just plant the potato, cut a hole in the coffee sack, just again to hold off on that bindweed. So it didn't, didn't quite work. We, we did come back quite a bit, so that wasn't too, too bad. But this year what we did is we left all, everything that's already been in there over the last two years. And then we put down a, a layer of coffee sack. <laughs> then we put a layer of cardboard because it does take time for the coffee sacks to break down. Then I think we put another layer of coffee sack. Marissa might have to correct me. I could have some of that uh, correct. Which sandwich layer I'm on, I'm not sure. We put a lot of layers down and then we went and got some composted manure, the same that I have growing for my garlic, which has just been absolutely fantastic. So then we put our hay over top and have let it sit over the winter. So it's been capturing all the water that we get here in Victoria. And so I'm gonna put my potatoes in. And as you can see, those potatoes have got eyes. The potatoes, these are a variety. Some of them are uh, some Kennebecs that we purchased and, and then went through time. So some of these have just got some great big beautiful eyes in there. This, the ones that are long, these ones would have came from the garden. Like this one is just ridiculously long. and. I uh, got a great tip from my mom and she said, when you're putting your long eyes out, lay them down because each of these is going to be its own little potato plant. So that's very exciting. We got a big, big pile of potatoes to plant right now. So planting with the Ruth Stout method is super, super easy. So even if you only have a small plot, you could do this. The great thing is, is that you can get away without watering or fertilizing. And last year we actually did an experiment and we had a two week hot spell, which I think just about everywhere in the world had a two week hot spell last summer. And we didn't do any water and we still out of this bed still pulled uh, 20 pounds of potatoes. And we did two plantings of our potatoes. The second planting we did add fertilizer. We used the compost tea that, that I make and also we did water it. So I want you to see just how easy this method is. It's just stunning. So I'm gonna start here, but I do, I wanna put my long ones over here. But basically <clears throat> we have our spud. We pick up the straw, just moving it out of the way, just with my glove. Pop the potato in, cover it back with the straw. Done like dinner. So basically I could do the same thing. I could have just made a whole little trench here to plant our potatoes in. So let's put it on speed camera so we can get a whole bunch done in a short period of time. We did change the orientation 
last year we just had rows where this way we figured that we could really optimize it by just having these sections and uh, so that I could actually plant more potatoes in them. We are finished. Um, I will probably put some compost tea onto the straw. Now as the straw, it's been breaking down and you know you can see we've got these little swells here and there and um, so I do have another bale that's right over there so I will be taking that apart and I will be adding I don't know if you could see in the time lapse but it was like I was putting leaves up on so we will build this up as they are growing I do have some grapes in there so I'm hoping that my grapes We'll be okay with growing the potatoes. A wee bit of the potatoes. Yes, a wee bit of the potatoes. And so just like that, we got it all done. I think it probably took me about 30 minutes. I did take a little bit of, of a break because in the farmhouse kitchen, Marissa is making a spiced gouda for the first time. So she had a little errand to run. So in between planting the potatoes, I was cutting the curd. Woo. Anyway. If you have any questions about the roost out method, I'm not, you know, the fine expert, but if you do have some questions or some comments, feel free to comment down below and I will do my best to answer them. I love that you come along with me for these adventurous rides of things that I'm growing and learning how to do because it's been a long way coming from being a jazz singer to being a farmer. Have a great day.